Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to day three. Are you ready for this? The 10 day van build and the road to Euros. Aisha, thank you very much for that little caption. I like it a lot. Today is a very exciting day because we have a mechanic coming. She's got quite a few oil leaks. Quite a few oil leaks. I cannot wait just to see, to be honest, what is wrong with the van for him to hopefully fix it and for us to learn a shed load of stuff about what is going on. Because the big issue we've had since day one of this van is, is it actually gonna get us to Germany and back? Snap. Where? Stuff dodgy. Snapped? No. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's snapped. Look, there's oil. Oh, my God. If you haven't caught up in this entire series, then me and my brother, Ed, there he is. He's already started work this morning. This is why you just build just it. Just hold it like that, you This is why you build it away from the thing. Oh, God. <laughs> Snap? We bought this Ford Transit van for £2,000 and we have 10 days to convert it to drive over to Germany for the Euros. <laughs> so yesterday we have sound deadened. We have also started to add a bit of this uh, thermo liner insulation. Ed this morning is going to crack on and finish most of this off. We have also cut in the holes for the roof vent and also the skylight over there. To give a slight bit of context about the vehicle, Mechanically, we're missing a nut. Apparently, you can actually replace the wheel hub, but obviously, once Sam is here, I'll show him that, and he'll know exactly what to do. We have got, in the engine bay, a piece of rope holding up a pipe, which uh, was a nice accessory that came with the vehicle. Underneath the van, we have an oil leak, which I think is coming from the sump. When I bought the van, I drove it back from Southampton, where I picked it up from, back down to the workshop, which was about an hour and a half. Have I made a serious, serious mistake in buying this? The longer I drive it, the more I think I have made a mistake. When I was going in fifth and sixth gear, I had no power whatsoever. So uh, yeah, looking forward to Sam coming over, diagnosing a few of the problems and learning a little bit more about what could possibly be going wrong. <laughs> So before Sam the mechanic comes, we're gonna jump on the roof and uh, try and get the skylight and the fan in and installed. So the problem is that uh, we've got these ridges on top of the van and it's really annoying because there's only one. When you put this on, it's not flush at all. You've got a bit of a gap. So I went to B&Q this morning to grab some tape. It's not the same tape that I used before. Chuck it up here. Oh, lovely. It's a bit of roofing tape. It was all they had in B&Q. So going to basically build up these edges to be the same height as this ridge here, so that when we put the uh, the fan on, it's all nice and snug fit, put some Seeker Flex under it, and it should hopefully be waterproof. The only thing that's stopping it from going flush is this ridge here. So if we cut with the multi-tool a little channel so that it sits in there, we can then put that tape all around here, and it's gonna be better. Rush everything, we got seven days left. All we've done is Clean. Remember, do it at the widest point, not the top narrow point. Thank you very much. So after a bit of a squabble and decisions to be made about how best to install this fan, we grabbed the multi-tool and started to cut out a little groove so the fan would sit nice and flush on the roof of the van. Flush. Lovely. First groove cut. The moment of truth. Does it sit better? Is it? Not yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew where to do that bit. Yeah, got to take that edge off there. Oh, it's not touching. Yes, it is touching. That's what's stopping it from going down. Second attempt. That's it. It fits. Perfect. Right, we'll just seek a flex that. Hey, like a glove. Like a glove. Not a professional job, but sometimes you've got to just make things work. We'll hide that part. We'll hide it. We'll no, sand it we'll down. Exactly. <laughs> so after we knew it would fit correctly, I went and laid the edges of the metal where the fan sits with this roofing tape to hopefully prevent any leaks and water seeping through, whilst Ed was starting to construct the frame of the fan, which I was a little bit sceptical of. I have never, ever in my entire life seen woodwork like that. You've never seen genius. Look at the length of those screws. The wood's going to snap. I don't know. <laughs> oh, God, I can't watch. There's no way I'm letting him do the woodwork inside the van. Do I reach the plonker? Huh? They have to be that long. You're going to snap the wood with those length screws. Look at the size of them. Just go for it. We just need the most basic square frame You're ever. You're telling me I'm going to snap the wood and then you're telling me to go for it? Oh. oh. What? <laughs> you're about 20 mil off. They're all the same. Oh, my God almighty. 
I thought my woodwork was bad. <laughs> oh my god! Move out of the way! Jesus! How are you going to hold it all still? Well, that's what I said. Hang on. Right, no pilot hole. Just buzz it in and see what happens. If not, I'm cutting new pieces of wood, and I'm going to do this in about five seconds. All right. If the wood splits. Let's yeah, see. just go slowly. It will split, probably because you've chose the thickest screw with the thinnest wood. Well, you haven't got any other screws, have you? <laughs> you give me screws and it'll work. Well, have you got plenty of screws here? Plenty where? <laughs> All in the box. Oh, yeah? You're in reverse. I'm oh, not. <laughs> Gently as she goes. Right, now you want to be fucking gentle, dear. <laughs> Bob's your uncle. Funny's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. Look at the state of that. Yeah, you meant to hold it. Yeah, that's why I don't know why you're building the thing on this. Take it out and then buzz it back in again. Now blast it in. Hold on, stop. No, what are you, what, what is that going to do? I'm keeping it down so it doesn't raise up. Right, watch out. Go. Oh, wow, what's that going to do? Such a better join than before. That is such a better join. Yeah, I know, because I just put this on it. Christ almighty, we need another fucking 20 days to do this. Just hold the thing. I mean, Christ. who on earth hold it. puts the fan upside down to have a stable surface to screw into? <laughs> ah! Hold the fan. <laughs> Why would you put it on this? How am I meant to hold it? Right. This is why you just build just it. Just hold it like that, you This is why you build it away from the Thing. Oh, God. Oh, it snapped? You're in it and it goes. She snapped. Has it? Yeah, of course she has. This is too ridiculous. <laughs> what, why are you building the frame on this, which is irrelevant? All right, take it off now, then. Well, too late. You've, you've just... Uh, How would you have done it? I would have got the measurements that I needed for this, taken it all away from the fan, right, can I set it you? all up, right, and the just... The more you talk, the less we do. I'll just like it if you'd listen to me. Right. Hold... Hold, yep, yeah, hold the, the dome-shaped fan still. Take it out, stop, stop. Don't keep screwing when it's snapped. Well, what else are you going to do? Go back out and go slowly. No, because it's too... Go slowly, take it out. <laughs> oh, my God, almighty yeah, God. Stop it. She'll be fine. Oh, God. Surrendous. Don't look at it. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> God. I told you we should have glued it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can you see that? Right, first of all, I would just like to claim that I said we should glue it. Is that screwed it? <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> look, look at the... <laughs> look at the absolute... <laughs> look at the absolute state of the frame that he's just built. Right. Look, look, look. That's nice and stable, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> It doesn't need to be that stable. It doesn't need to be stable, but Christ almighty. Right, let's glue it. Just let me cut some new pieces of wood. All right. Very let's, quickly. Let's see if you could do any better. Where's the tape measure? Where's the bloody right angle? Where's the you pencil? You need to measure that one, you can, right? It's Where's the pencil? Where's the right angle? Here we go. Right. Do you even know now to use a tape measure? You can't even draw a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even use a right angle. <laughs> of course I can, you idiot. <laughs> Look at the way you use the hand. <laughs> I love that you think you're so much better. Have you just seen the state of I said, just let's done? glue it. You're the one trying to rush the process. Trying to rush it? Never rush the process. Go on, then. Got one piece there. Go on, then. So I can do another piece there. there go on, then. Get a, get a screw into it. I'm not getting my screws into it yet. I need to cut all of the pieces first. Now look. All right, let's see. Go on, bravo. That fits in there. That's the same as what you did. <laughs> <laughs> You're an absolute melon. Is it? What's happened there? <laughs> How's that happened? That's the same as what you did. You are the biggest hypocrite. <laughs> right, go on then. All right, let's watch you drill it. I need a pilot hole. Oh, yeah, that's cheating. It's not cheating. We're both as useless as each other. No. Yes. You rush me. I've got to rush you, otherwise nothing's going to get done. <laughs> this is the value. You can't fucking measure wood. Buzz this in. All right. You said you were going to do it. Do it. Yeah, I will do it. I know you, can do that. you didn't know you could do that? Yeah. This thing's about 100 years old. It's yes, grandpa's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hold it like I did, for God's sake. Well, put it in the hole, look. A little bit better than yours. <laughs> the wood split. 
No, it hasn't. At least it has. I can't see that. <laughs> my, my eyes have gone all of a sudden. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're a plonker. We're both idiots. Yes. I said we should glue it. So after about half an hour of bickering, arguing and trying to prove who was right and who was wrong, we continued to get the frame done and eventually we had something that kind of worked. But the bickering wasn't over just yet. Right, take that down. And then I'm going to put a clamp and we can clamp it for a few minutes. I don't know why you just don't want to do it all at once. How the hell are you going to clamp it when I put the fan on? This fan has been hard, hard work. Mechanics here in an hour. Hopefully we can yeah, get this one. There's a gap here, that's why, because you need the glue to, to be stuck to the surface. There will be a gap because it's a ridge. It's going to stick, don't worry. Leave it for a few minutes. After just a little bit more bickering on the best way to install the fan, I smothered this fan in as much Seeker Flex as humanly possible. It does not look pretty. There is no denying that. If there is anyone that can make Seeker Flex or any kind of silicon stuff like this look good, I'll send you a tenner because honestly, no matter how much you play around with it, it just always looks crap, disgusting and ugly. The main thing is it's in, fingers crossed it's all watertight. Only time will tell, to be honest with you. Excuse our cracked piece of wood, but uh, you know what? It's nice and sturdy. So when we put the ceiling on, the uh, the cover that covers this will uh, hopefully go nice and flush. There's the cables, which we need to wire up, also covered in Seekerflex, but fan is in. So we've misplaced the handle that you use to wind up the fan. So currently the fan is down. Ed is misplaced, blaming me. in other words, he's thrown it away. I'm blaming Ed. He says he put it on the side. I never saw it on the Something side. Something about Will you need to know. He throws away everything. I don't Unless like he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> I don't like unnecessary crap. So we might have to take these with us. Unless we can find something else to uh, do this. But... <laughs> is it going up? It's going up. It's going up. It's not very easy with these plugs. <laughs> Is it still going up? Look at that sicker flex job, eh? Beautiful. Is it still going up? How high does it go then? It'd be a lot easier if we had some handles. Yeah, but I don't know where you put it. That you threw away. That's right. it. That's as far as it goes. Beautiful. How do you turn the actual thing on? There's a but that button there. It doesn't actually press in though. Right, I've just done a quick wiring test. Well, I haven't actually tested it. I've just quickly wired it in to test it. So plugged it into the jackery. Let's turn that on. Hopefully now, fingers crossed, this should work. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Why is that not working? Uh -oh. Why is that not working? Oh, it's definitely live. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, lick it. Lick it? <laughs> the wires, not that. I wonder if we needed something that you threw away. Like what? I think that button might be faulty. We got this uh, fan off Amazon. How much was it? Do you remember? Pretty cheap. Pretty 60 cheap. Pounds. You know, instead of getting a Max Air fan, which I can't remember how much they are, we just wanted to get everything quickly off Amazon. Bear with me. Okay. I'm gonna try and figure this out and see why it's not coming on. This is just fantastic. Day three is going horrendously Swimming bad. Me. So with day three not going to plan whatsoever, we actually diagnosed the problem with the fan being that the switch was broken. Anyway, Sam the mechanic, he popped around and I showed him around the engine, had a bit of a chin wag, and then he got into it to try and figure out what exactly was going wrong with this van. The only thing you have to watch on these majorly is to get where these go rusty down here. What is that down there? That is the chassis leg. Right. So that is like the, the structure of the van. Yeah. They go rotten down here. The best thing to do is obviously get the engine on a jack, take this mount off, Yeah. just get the crud and that out of the way. And then the idea is, is to treat it and then just give it a coat of paint yeah. just to try and protect it a bit more. It's actually got an engine mount bolt missing. There's definitely a timing chain cover that's leaking. Really? Definitely. Yeah. Seal the residue. Seal the residue down here and around here. This has been, yeah. whoever filled it up with oil mist. And yeah. It's obviously come down here as well. So, but yeah, it's not too bad. What, and the timing chain's in there? Yeah, timing chain's in there, yeah. You've got yeah. two cam gears there. 
um, couple of guides, and then it goes down to the crank down the bottom. Right. But you don't think it looks too bad? No, it looks quite alright. It looks quite tidy. A couple of little fatty things on it, but yeah. but yeah, not not too bad. How rusty does it look? Do you think? Because I don't think it looked too bad. There's a few key points you have to worry about on these. Yeah. And it's up in these corners. They get a bit crusty up in there. Yeah. Um, but it looks alright. These cross members here get a little bit, a little bit crusty, but they're not the end of the world. Yeah. Easy to sort out. You get a bit across the back here, but this is nice and solid. Oh yeah, you can see it on the other side there. Yeah. I see what you mean surface. about the crust. Yeah, just a little bit. So that's like surface rust building up underneath like the the, the treated stuff that goes on it. Yeah. Um, and then you just see it's like starting to flake away. Yeah. But the actual solidness of it though, it's it's still good. Such a dumb question, but this is the chassis. Yeah. So yeah. Like the bit that we was looking at at the other end. Yeah. yeah near the engine mount. That is that. Right, that, okay. There you got obviously one there, one there, runs straight the way along. That's the main structure. So if you have like a crash yeah. and it gets shunted and this gets bent, yeah. that's what they call like structural damage. Right. When they, when they get bent, them chassis legs. Oh, I got you. But, um, but yeah, no, she's looking good. I'm going to be learning a lot, I think, <laughs> over the next few hours or days. What about this then? I know I showed Sam this the other day on FaceTime, but how does it work? Because I thought it was a stud, but it's like a, it, the whole hub, isn't it? No, no, no. So it is a stud. So obviously this is this threaded bit is your stud that the nut goes on. Yeah. And, and that, you take the wheel off and you put it through the other side and then the, the nut will pull it back in. And obviously, if you was removing it, you'd just take the wheel off. Yeah. And then you can punch them back the other way and change them. They are renowned for braking. Um, it's just just one of those things, unfortunately. But, um, but yeah, that one's actually missing completely because I've got my finger right in there, so... When you buy a vehicle, right, yeah. should I have looked underneath it? In most definitely. <laughs> Most definitely. What is that? So that's a sump, is it? Yeah, so this is your sump. Yeah. Oil filter. That's drenched, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. This is your water pump. She's, she's got quite a few oil leaks. Quite a few oil leaks. Yeah, that would explain why when I left it for like a couple of days and came back here over the weekend, it, there was like a massive patch of oil on the floor. Yeah, yeah, there was a bit of antifreeze as well, wasn't there? Yeah, I did see that actually, yeah. Which I think is this pinkness around here. Yeah. This pinkness, so antifreeze sort of stains like that when right. it gets in contact with oxygen. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's going to be leaking around there. Whether it be that what actual water pump or a bit further up, we can have a look. Right. Um, we'll get it cleaned up, get it run up, and see if we can try and find where the oil's coming from, and then hopefully get it sorted for you. Quite stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you can get a little bit high off this stuff. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> you can smell it already. <laughs> but you can't go selling it on the streets, are we? No. <laughs> <laughs> so that literally just cleans everything? Yeah, yeah. So you can see, like, so if you look... Oh, that is so strong. So if you look here, yeah. it's all dark oil. Yeah. Now here, you can see it's started to break it down, and this is more rust colour rather than oil. Yeah, you can see it, yeah. yeah so it's started to break it down, obviously. Once it gets a bit of a rub over with a cloth, it'll obviously help it out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but obviously, like I say, the idea is wash it all off, Run it up, and obviously, hopefully, then we can have a look when it's dripping oil and try and trace where it's coming from. Because obviously, at the minute, it's just all over. covered completely over here, so you're sort of guessing, really. You are taking the piss. <laughs> taking a wheel off in the past has honestly taken me hours. <laughs> Woo! What? What are you looking at? She needs brake pads. Really? Woo! There's nothing left of them. Oh, yeah. There's nothing left of them at all. So, as soon as you break this, yeah. just down in in there, yeah. that's your brake pad. <laughs> that should be about three or four times the thickness of what it is. Really? Yeah. Yeah, but when I drove it, I actually thought the brakes were all right. They probably <laughs> were. They're metal on metal. <laughs> So we've Sam given the van a good once over, checking it for any problems, and me asking a thousand questions to try and learn as much as possible. We've got one code in the engine, two in the ABS, one in the instrument panel, let's have a look, turbocharger, so supercharger, and yeah. under boost condition. I think that was the one that was coming up when I did the, uh, the thing yeah. the other day. Right front wheel speed sensor, valid data received from electronic control module. Okay. Might look like it needs a wheel speed sensor, it's not the end of the world. I left Ed to continue on with the inside of the van, and before we knew it, it was the end of the day. We had a list of parts that we needed to get ordered and fitted for tomorrow, and you'll see all of the disasters and the things that happen in the next video. So if you've enjoyed it, make sure to give the video a like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with day four and five of this 10-day van build.